So WWDC just ended and I wanted to install iOS 17 beta one on my main device. So I installed it on my iPhone 13 Pro Max so I can kind of get a hands-on first impressions of what it's like. Now it's only been out for about an hour or so and only a developer account can actually get this installed. So if you guys do want to install it, go that route. But I will recommend not installing it right away because this is a beta one. And like I mentioned, it's only been out for about an hour now at this point. So it's extremely buggy. It does lag a little bit. Sometimes it does reset on me. So definitely, install it at your own risk. But I wanted to give you guys my first impressions, talk about what they added, what new features are accessible right away, what features are still missing, and things like the journaling app still not being even on the phone itself, some of the things that I wanna talk about. But without further ado, let's talk about iOS 17 beta one, all the ins and outs, and all the features that Apple added. And we're gonna talk about iOS in a silo, so we're not gonna talk about the things that it kinda of talks to, like tvOS, watchOS, and things like that. But let's get into it. Okay everyone, so let's get right into this video. And as you see, I am using an iPhone 13 Pro Max, but I do wanna reiterate that this is a beta one of a major update. So to give you an idea of how big it is, we are at 2.86 gigs. I've seen with the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, it gets around 3.1, 3.12 gigs. But keep in mind, this is a beta one, so there's gonna be a lot of issues with this one, and immediately you start to see that, hey, this is not a perfect situation, so if you guys don't wanna put it on your main device, or maybe if you have a second device, maybe put it on there, but on your main device, I might avoid it, at least for now, until they get rid of the main bugs on beta one. But if we go into the settings, let's go into the build number, so let's go to general, let's go to about, let's go to 17. So you can see that we're on 21A5248V. So normally it doesn't go up this high. You only go, go up this high with that last letter moniker when it's one of these new bigger updates. So every two weeks we're probably gonna get an update until finally we get the final release, but it probably won't be around until mid-September to early October, depending on when the iPhone 15 lineup does release. But that is what we're looking at in terms of the actual build number and the build size. So when you really think about it, there isn't too much that actually changed with iOS. It's all kind of quality of life improvements, but they're all pretty much inside of messages. So if I go into my messages, I kind of want to show you guys how it all really works. So the first thing that I want to actually show off is that there's a new section for the apps that you use inside of iMessage. So if you go into this little plus sign right here, you actually get a brand new interface. So you can see you have your camera, the photos, stickers, which we'll touch on in a little bit, cache, audio, location, and if you swipe up or press that more button, you get a bunch of other ones. So this is a new kind of style because I guess Apple realized that not a lot of people actually went into the actual kind of like app section in there to actually start using those applications. But you can see that now they're easily accessible. The main ones, I guess the Apple native ones are gonna be right there for you. So very easy to use. But you can see if you just press on the camera, it's gonna open up the camera app. We'll press done there, press plus again, and you can see that it's still working. But now let's go into stickers, because stickers is a new kind of section in here. Now stickers have been around, depending on what pack you have. So if I go to like the Papa John's pack, you can actually used to be able to add stickers and just send them through here. But now you can actually click and drag them and put them onto any single one that you want. So if I wanna grab this little pepper right here, just kind of scroll up and put it on here, then you can see that I'm actually just putting the sticker on anything that I wanna see. And another new thing that came with this is the ability to add custom stickers. So if I wanna add a custom sticker, I press this plus sign right here. It's gonna go into my pictures here, and if I wanna grab this one and make this a sticker, we'll press add sticker. You can see it's gonna create a sticker. I'm gonna add an effect as well, so I wanna make it shiny, which is very cool. I'll press done, grab this, put it onto here, and then you can see actually if I lower this down or scroll this up, if I grab the phone, and actually move the phone around, the sticker actually changes colors a little bit, or it kind of moves as the phone moves itself as well. So those are stickers kind of in a nutshell. You can use pre-existing ones that you've used in the past, or just create your own and you'll be good to go. The next thing is you actually share your location from right within here. So if you wanna share your location, by all means you can. Very easy to do, same as you would before. But the next thing I wanna do inside of messages is you can actually now, there's a new way to actually interact with some messages. So first off, you can see that I have a couple of voice messages here, but you can see that now these voice messages are annotated for you so you can see what those voice messages say without having to listen to the entire voice message. And I have a couple of friends that like to send two, three minute long voice messages. So having this right there is perfect. So it says, let's test out this and see if it actually shows in the dialogue. And of course it works perfectly. Another cool one is if I kind of swipe up here and normally if you wanted to reply to a message directly, I would have to long press and then press reply. But now I can just swipe to the left and reply directly to that line or to that message itself, say hello. And you can see that I have the reply in line right there, which shows it perfectly right there. So just some easy to use kind of situations inside of iMessage to kind of improve everything. 
The next thing inside of iMessage is if you go back into your plus then scroll down, there's a new check-in feature. Now this check-in feature, it's exactly what it sounds like. So let your friends know that you've arrived with check-in. Your friends will be notified automatically when you get to your destination. So if I press continue, iPhone will keep up with your progress. So if you are making progress towards your destination, you'll be prompted in that you'll have 15 minutes to respond. And then you can choose all this stuff right here. So choose the data you'd like to share if you don't arrive. If you don't arrive as expected, iPhone will prompt you. If you don't respond, iPhone will notify your friend and share your data that you've chosen. Show example. So you can show a limited, which includes current location details, about battery and network signal for iPhone and Apple Watch, or full includes all limited data plus route traveled and location. So basically it depends on how much you wanna share. Now this is gonna be perfect. Let's say if you have a child, like this would've been perfect for my parents in high school. So if I was supposed to be at a friend's house and I wanted to get myself there, they can actually have a check-in. So when I arrive at my friend's house, it'll tell my parents like, hey, Fernando has arrived at X, Y, and Z's house and they're good to go. Versus me saying that I was gonna go to a friend's house but ended up not going there. So this is awesome and nice little check-in feature. I know it's gonna be very useful to a lot of people. So the next few features I wanna mention, I'm gonna overlay because I need a second iPhone on iOS 17 to do. I was able to do this with Jeff from the channel. So he was able to give me a call and what I did is I sent him directly to voicemail and with that voicemail, then he started to speak that voicemail and I got a live transcription of what he was saying. And then in the moment I could decide to block him, answer it, or just let it finish off. So I decided to let it finish off and it gave me again, a live transcription. Then if I go into my voicemails, this is the exact transcription that he left. So it was very useful. I can see this being used a lot of the time, especially if you're in a situation where maybe you're in a meeting, the exact situation that Apple touted, which you wanna know if this was an important phone call or something that could be waited until the next end until the end of the meeting. So a great little addition right there. And then you also have FaceTime voicemails, which is exactly what it sounds like. So you're able to FaceTime somebody and if they decline it or if they don't answer, you can then leave a video voicemail of a FaceTime so that person can see it. And you can see some screenshots of what it looks like on the other end for that person. So I love to see that. So it looks like it's working when you have an iOS 17 to an iOS 17 phone. Originally I tried it on from an iOS 17 to iOS 16 and it didn't let me record a video, but it seems to be working. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the video. Nine to five Mac, this close to 800K subs. Let's get it. Now this next feature is called standby. So Apple talked about this as a new kind of situation for your iPhone, which is very similar to your Apple Watch. So if you've ever used your Apple Watch or you actually set your Apple Watch down horizontally like I'm doing here, you kind of have this like nightstand mode, so it goes kind of horizontal and it shows you just your information at a glance. So now Apple has adopted that on iPhones, but I originally thought that it was gonna be for only always on display supported iPhones, or which the iPhone 13 Max is not. But if I go into your settings, you do have a standby section. So standby, standby will turn on when stationary and in landscape while on power to show information like widgets, photo, frame, or clock. And then you have your night mode. So all you have to do really is turn your phone ho horizontally here, make sure that it's locked, and then it should go into nightstand mode. So you can see immediately it goes into nightstand mode. You have your two options, it shows your charge. I can swipe through these smart stacks right here. I can swipe through these clocks right here to show me what I wanna see. If I long press, you can actually kind of change everything up. So you can change what exactly it's showing. So you can have your smart rotate on. I can add widgets on here. So I'm able to add, let's say some battery if I want to. Let's add this widget on here. We'll press done. So then it shows you exactly what's going on. So this is gonna be perfect for in the morning. If I wanna find out what it's gonna be temperature wise in the morning, what I should wear, this is gonna be awesome and it's a bigger screen versus this down here. It sometimes got the job done, but it was not enough information. Here it shows you all your information that you have, some reminders, events for tomorrow or for today. I think this is a great little implementation and the fact that it works on more than just the always on display iPhones is great. And also you have the ability to use memories. So it kind of just goes through memories if you want to. So if I want to swipe to the right, it gives you some other kind of complications. So it's being treated almost like an Apple Watch face if I want to. So I can swipe up, swipe to the right, swipe down, kind of do whatever I want. You get the big watch face here. This is very cool. I'm very impressed with how this kind of came out. Kudos to Apple for kind of making this something actually useful. So when you're charging it and going trying to go to sleep, it works well. And then to get out of it, all you do is you rotate back up and then immediately it's all good to go. Now the next feature I wanna show off is called contact posters. So if you go into your phone, you go into your contacts and you go into your My Card, which is the one that you're using, you click on this right here, contact photo and poster, you now have the ability to change this interface right here. So basically, this is what Apple was talking about with being able to name drop. So being able to share your contact just by tapping somebody else's phone, this is the information that they're gonna get when A, you send them your phone number, and B, when they actually call you. So if I wanna edit this, you can edit this however you see fit. You can make it an emoji, I can customize it. So if I wanna change my contact photo, I can do that. If I wanna customize and change the poster, I can do that as well. So if I wanted to say my name, 
change how thick the lettering is, change the coloring if I want to, change the font itself. That's always cool if I want to actually add a different background or change my Memoji. So if I want to go back to the mustache look, I can do that. I'm going to cancel. I can also create new. So it's treated very similarly to a lock screen. So if I go into my photos and if I want to use this one, for instance, it's going to create something like that for me exactly like it would, like as if it was the actual lock screen. So great little addition. Again, more user friendly stuff as opposed to actual function, but still very cool. Now there's some other smaller features which we're gonna save for a big, bigger roundup. Jeff is gonna create a video that's gonna give you like the top 100 features of iOS 17, but just to give you an idea. So for instance, if I go into my notes, Apple changed some small things like the magnifier. If I press down, the magnifier looks a little bit different. It looks bigger, it looks easier to use. So that's different. Some other things that maybe Freeform took over. So Freeform actually adopted some of the things that were missing from its original release, which is a lot, a lot of what the notes app used to have. So being able to kind of use a shape to make a perfect shape, right? Do the star, like this wasn't in free form last year. So for now I can add a perfect shapes and some other things like annotating and being able to import files into this kind of free form situation. So overall iOS 17, again, is more about bug improvements than anything else, but let's get out of this view and finish up this video. So that's gonna round up the first impressions of iOS 17 beta one. I'm gonna keep reiterating, it is a beta one of a major update. So definitely do not put it on your main device. If you don't wanna deal with some bugs and some issues, it's gonna freeze. It's gonna kinda of go with a black screen. Some apps will close randomly. It's going to happen with a beta one. So if you're up for it, then go for it. But I'm gonna recommend don't do it. Overall, the improvements and the feature updates are great. They're more aesthetic and they're more kind of user experience type of features and quality of life features as opposed to game changing productivity features. But hey, to each their own, I think they're welcome features. The FaceTime voicemails, the live voicemails are great. The new kind of contact posters are awesome. And we're gonna see more and more features come out of iOS 17 as the new betas come in. So definitely save subscribe. We got some more content on WWDC coming. I still wanna talk about iPad OS. I wanna recap Mac OS. And of course, we wanna talk about Apple's Vision Pro. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. And if you guys wanna watch some more coverage on WWDC, click on one of these right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.